I believe in miracles. I believe in a greater world. I believe in good things. And it starts with we. Thank you for never giving up. When times get tough, we are more connected than we pretend to be. Let these wings make me free as I fly on the winds of change. A new season has come rearranged. The old one is done interchanged and living as a butterfly has taught me one thing. There is no beginning or ending, only shape shifting. So let us call this a transformation. Let us call this a reformation. My wing pattern is a blueprint for elevation and there ain't no stopping this reclamation constructed in a language of sounds and silences that must be read between the lines until we realize that this whole reality is constructed. The education that values one human life over another is corrupted. Migration is a way of life. Free. I be, we be free. Peace, y'all. My name is Aisha Fukushima, and I'm a justice strategist, a performance lecturer, founder of the global hip hop project Rap Divism, as in rap activism, and more. And I'm so thrilled to join you all for this upcoming event. Hello, peace. How y'all doing? Salamu alaikum, baskara nanga def. What's good? Genki deska ni hao ma ke tal. How are y'all feeling? I hope that this finds you well wherever you're tuning in from. It's a pleasure to join you. I'm Aisha Fukushima, and I'm so honored to be your host for this evening. To start us off, I wanted to offer us a moment to just get grounded and to acknowledge the indigenous land that we live, that we thrive that we rely upon. Here in Philadelphia, I live and thrive and rely upon the indigenous land uh, that, was, um, that is occupied by way of the Lenape people. I know that growing up in Seattle is occupied Duwamish territory. Even my roots spanning to Japan, uh, we gotta acknowledge the indigenous peoples all around the world, whether that's the Ainu, the Ryukyu, among others. So taking a moment, taking some deep breaths to get grounded. Thank you for taking some moments to acknowledge the indigenous land that we rely upon. You can feel free to also pop it into the chat to share where you're tuning in from and acknowledging that land as well. I'm so honored to be hosting this evening. Um, as you know, this is on the Lush YouTube channel. So shout out to all the Lushies that are tuning in. If you're new to Lush, welcome. As you know, Lush sells uh, much more than soap and all these incredible products, body products, but also uh, has a space that allows us to really explore um, in many different dimensions, human rights, environmental justice, as well as animal protection, among a myriad of other issues. Um, tonight in particular, I'm so thrilled that we're going to be able to focus in on building momentum, particularly around Black Lives Matter. And it's hard to believe that over many years of collaboration with Lesh, it's been almost over a year of writing a poem called Green Power that was about uh, the global climate strikes and green movements all around the globe. Um, tonight in particular, we're gonna be honing in on all the incredible work with Black Lives Matter, uh, this focus also on shifting the ways in which police brutality have continued to unfold historically here in the United States. I can't help but think of the words of MLK talking not only about racism, but militarism, mass materialism, class inequality, so many of these kind of key themes uh, that he brought up in the final year of his life in particular and how it resonates for tonight's discussion. Um, we know that we need conversations like the one we are about to enter tonight in order to shift not only the frameworks, but the actions that we take here on out to be more aligned with the values, with the heart, with the compassion and with the radical love that is so needed in the world at this very moment. So thank you for joining this conversation. And as a way of transitioning into the discussion, I was asked to share a short poem. So I hope that this resonates with you all. I've been missing you, missing you, 
Yes, it's true, incredible, so indelible. Wanna hold you close, will not let go. Centrifugal, centrifugal. Let us rise and never fall. No more burden, burden, burden. Let them talk and we will fly from this. From all this hurting, hurting, hurting. Colonization is the process of being a maid, a foreigner in your own home. Like a cancer that sucks life from limbs, bone from marrow sucked at the lips. Homing is not just for pigeons. I trace my way back. I crave to return to myself, to a place like that Pacific salmon returning to natal streams. I am a child of revolution and half dreams. And I am always waking, inhaling breath that sometimes feels like it's escaping me, yearning, traveling forward to the place where my salt and fresh water meet in the estuaries of my soul to let me know that this land is fertile. I bleed oil and ink and sometimes diamonds, but mostly truths, constantly giving birth to that which both constrains and frees me, sometimes poisons turn to medicine and medicines into poison. And in the face of all this, I am planting seeds of resistance composting waste into growth. Call me a flower or a weed. I am a defiant dandelion S, bearing compassion despite all the odds. The big bad wolf may try to blow me away, but it just spreads the roots of my influence. Oh yes, I'll see you again next season because I am the reason that we know that love still exists because I am still here because we are still here. Seeds of little freedom flowers parachuting on windy war days, establishing home anywhere that they land. But home like sky and earth is not just property for home like water is not just property, it is life. And in the meantime, I'll turn up the radio humming to the sounds of Nina Simone's lullabies. I wish I knew how, how it feels to be free. Remove all the chains that are holding me. I wish I knew how, how it feels to be free. Say it loud, say it clear for the whole wide world to hear. Claiming foreignness as my passport to anywhere and everywhere. I am not destined to any single place. I am both the traveler and the destination. Even when this nation, this nation state claims not to have enough room to hold me. Why won't someone hold me? How can it be so lonely in these cities of dreams? Perhaps because so many people are asleep. Well, listen now. I am roaring with lion's tooth flowers, echoing universes in empty hallways, calling you to stay awake, playing singing bowls to stir you from slumber. Welcome home from the matrix. I hope that you had a good time. I am Morpheus in floral form. I am stardust fertilizing the grass that you walk upon. I am the crashing storm carrying the most delicate petals of hope. I am the love in evolution and revolution, and I am here. Welcome home. Thank you all so much. I hope you enjoyed that poem. And without much further ado, I would love to jump in and introduce our incredible uh, group that's gonna have a discussion tonight. In particular, I want to introduce Mary Hooks, co-director of Southerners on New Ground, Latasha Brown, co-founder, Black Voters Matter Fund, and of course, Jessica Bird, co-founder, Electoral Justice Voter Fund, a project for the movement for Black Lives. Uh, it's such a pleasure. And in particular, I would love to welcome into the space Mary Hooks uh, to start us off. Mary Hooks is a Black lesbian feminist mother, organizer, and co-director of Southerners on New Ground. Song is a political home for LGBTQ liberation across all lines of race, class, abilities, age, culture, gender, and sexuality in the South. Welcome, Mary. How are you doing? Good, how you doing? I'm doing well. I had a question. You just opened us all up. Thank you. Thank you for that offering. So beautiful. Thank, Thank you. you. I'm so grateful for that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, would you mind sharing a few words about what called you to do this work or how you were called to do this work? Oh, honey, like most good things, um, 
I was um I was I was I was found in a bar one night mm-hmm. picking up some ladies. And that's how <laughs> real talk. That's how I did. <laughs> that's what like turned it on a little bit for me. But you know, I feel like my journey into um movement work was certainly like you know, like these different watershed moments, you know, and mm. at the experience of my own life, the life of my family, my community, and like something ain't right here, but not having the political education, the understanding, the analysis, et cetera, to understand uh, why our conditions were as they were and not realizing that there was somebody and institutions mm. who was responsible for it. But when I moved to Atlanta about 13 years ago or so, again, I met a woman at a bar, she told me, she was trying to stop the shackling of black women while giving birth in prison. And I was wow. like, what? That's happening? And you doing something about it? And that was the game changer. And that's um, Paris Hatcher. Shout out to Paris, one of our best homies. <laughs> um, she, um, that's when she introduced me to song uh, shortly thereafter. And that's where um, it's through song that um, raised me up, you know what I mean? and poured into my leadership and different elders um, mm. and out of song and across the South. And um, yeah, really helped me wow. to understand what this, what this work was all about and, and what is my role as a descendant, an African descendant, and what it meant to be a black lesbian woman, mother, to be engaged in a struggle. So. Whew. Thank you so much, Mary. I'm so excited to go deeper into this discussion. Um, and that's such a powerful way of starting us off. So thank you for sharing that. Um, I also want to invite into the space Latasha Brown, an award-winning organizer, philanthropic consultant, political strategist, jazz singer, and co-founder of Black Voters Matter Fund. Black Voters Matter Fund is expanding Black voter engagement and increasing progressive power through movement building and engagement, working with grassroots organizations, specifically in key states in the South. Latasha, welcome. <laughs> we we can almost, we can see your spirit and your energy okay. moving. We need I you know, to, I'm, oh, there we go. Done. Here I am. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You know, I am, um, so thank you, sister, for offering your gift. As Mary said, you opened us mm. up. You know, Mary is a, a cultural um, activist and artist herself. And so and so am I. And then you just set the yes. tone for us um, because I do think that this connectivity. So I just want to say just thank you for that offering because it helped me to get centered um, because we're out uh, today is an interesting mm. day. I'm out campaigning and we're working in Ohio and it's been a it's been a, 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 an, an interesting journey. Right. So Black Voters Matter Fund, I'll just say Black Voters Matter Fund is a capacity building organization that we seek to build um, power by empowering black led grassroots groups. We work with this year, we're going to work with over 300 black led grassroots groups in over 11 states in the country. Ooh. We interact di- in, in directly in uh, with them. Um, we resources, connecting them with tools, being a strategic thought partner. We see ourselves as kind of like special ops. There's, there are already organizations, <laughs> we're not empire building. There are already, we're not trying to set up Black Voter Matter chapters, but what we are trying to do is strengthen the already existing infrastructure. You know, and even as we speak, mm. um, even as we're talking right now, I'm sitting on what we call the Blackest Bus in America, traveling around the country, spreading love and building power. And there's over 200 people socially distant because they're in their car, car, <laughs> but we're actually doing like a drive in um, dinner debate tonight. And it is a beautiful, it's been a phenomenal space and a journey. And so part wow. of our work is rooted in the idea that grassroots communities, that grassroots groups are always on the front lines of providing support for our communities. And those are the groups that deserve kind of our, our support. And so if we build out that ecosystem, then fundamentally what we know is when we work together, we win. Mm. Whoo, thank you so much. Yes, absolutely. Oh my gosh, I feel so moved. Um, thank you so much for sharing. And I'm looking forward to also digging a little bit deeper into this conversation all together. Um, we're gonna pivot very briefly and just introduce last but not least, Jessica Bird. Welcome, Jessica. Jessica is a political <laughs> strategist focused on recruiting and electing people of color and working with people of color centered and led organizations on strategic political programming and self-sustainability. 
At the Movement for Black Lives, she directs the Electoral Justice Voter Project, which marshals across issue transnational Black electoral justice movement by building a network of local organizers and partners. Welcome, Jessica. Hey. You mind? Yeah. How are you? <laughs> my, my comrades are just how extraordinarily beautiful you are and are showing up in this in this moment. I was I was like. Just so moved. I closed my eyes as you were as you were singing. So thank you. Ooh, thank you, thank you. That means a lot. Um, and I'm I'm exponentially so moved by all the work that y'all are collectively doing. We are collectively doing across the country. I'm curious if you could share a few words about what called you to do this work or how you were called to do this work. Yeah, yeah. So it it, does, um, it, it doesn't surprise me that Latasha's in Ohio and. Um, <laughs> And Mary's in Georgia um, because those are two very specific political homes on my on my journey. I'm born and raised in Columbus, Ohio, and the story I typically tell is that I was born to one of the first activists I, I ever knew, but she didn't call herself that. It was my mother, Barbara Bird, and she was a poll worker. And she mm. um, she worked at the polls to make a little extra money. We were working poor, and um, and every election day morning, my dad would take me in one hand and some shea butter in another, and he would walk me across the street to the church where she was a poll worker. Literally since before I was born, and. Um, and I would sit in her lap as she did my hair uh, on election day mornings. And, and you know, it really demystified the process. So I never knew a world in which the people around me weren't participating in the process. I didn't know a world yes. in which my mom didn't feel entitled to information. And, mm. um, and so really got, I caught the bug and I began working on <laughs> my campaigns when I was 17 and I really spent the greater part of my entire 20s, um, I worked on campaigns wow. in 43 states across the country. And um, and, I, and I, I was feeling myself, you know, especially yeah. moving into the second part of my career. I was good at it. I felt like I was contributing in a meaningful way. Mm. And but and and, and but um, in 2014, you know, I remember uh, I was living in Washington, D.C. I was sitting at this you know, huge pack that um, I felt like I really had kind of landed a, a, a dream job. Um, and even though I had a racial justice analysis and have one and was working internally to, to change structures and to elect black women and women of color, et cetera, um, it, it really was sitting at my desk in this cubicle as, on August 9th, 2014, as Michael Brown's body laid in the street. And I was watching my friends be tear gassed. I was watching the city that I actually had worked on multiple campaigns in St. Louis and in Missouri. And I was just, I remember tears streaming down my face and really feeling like I needed to ask myself very clearly was the work I, I was doing contributing in a meaningful way to black movement? And, um, and at the time, truly the answer was no. You know, at the time, the you know, even to take Missouri as an example, there was a Democratic governor, Democratic secretary of state, a Democratic mayor, Democratic city council members of Ferguson and St. Louis. And mm. that doesn't transformationally change a place. And so it was really clear that I needed to be transformed and accountable to the people who believed in that transformation. And so in, mm. um, in 2015, I left. I created uh, my own firm called Three Point Strategies and became mm. accountable to the movement for black lives. And um, M Mary Hooks always says that, um, you know, we all have an assignment. And, um, and I remember really feeling clear that I had to show up to movement inside my assignment. And so my assignment has been electoral work. And the last four years, we have built a bad, incredible collective of, of black organizers and electoral activists and campaign managers. Yes. And um, we're coming for Black November. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Whew, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. So much. We have so much to delve into. If only we can stretch time and space. It's got to be a jazz, a jazz style conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, I want to welcome everyone back into the space. Um, wow. It's such a pleasure. Uh, <laughs> if I can jump in with a question by way of the late and great Grace Lee Boggs. What time is it on the clock of the world? 
What Wait, time is it? Where are you? Listening? No, I because I literally wow. I literally wow. Talk, yeah. Like drinking. She's here now. Now you now she's arrived. She's our, she's mean, our there's several here. Gotta have a cabral. <laughs> Gotta have cabral. If you're not reading that, what's going on in your life? Wow. So like, for you to name that. And literally that oftentimes how I like to enter a comment. What is happening? What time is it on the world's clock? <laughs> Yeah. My, my, my. So, so, you know, I think what time wow. it is, you know, I think about um, what we're experiencing right now, because we don't want to step over what we're experiencing. There are millions of people right now mm -hmm. that are struggling um, yep. because we're in the largest pandemic that we've ever had, um, particularly in the last hundred years in this country. And many of our communities, particularly our community, has been devastated by COVID-19. Um, I myself yeah. a couple of months ago caught COVID-19 and it was not a nice journey. And so in addition to that, I think we're looking at millions of Americans um, who have been, who are unemployed and who have lost their jobs in this space. We're looking at the threat of, of, of the loss of health care, but we're also looking at a growth in racial violence. We're looking at police brutality, all of these things that it's almost like it's the perfect storm where my, my, my aunt says, she was like, I wish 2020 just start all over, right? And so <laughs> on some level, you know, you look at the time and it's really bad, but I remember something that my grandmother used to say, and I share this all the time, that at the end of the day, how is coal created? Um, um, how is a diamond made? All diamond is is a piece of coal that under extreme pressure over time becomes a diamond. How is glass made? What glass is, all glass is, is sand that has been compressed. And over time, you it, with a, a certain amount of pressure, it becomes glass. What is the similarity between what the pressure does to coal and to sand? It gives them both what we know them for is clarity. And so what I am hoping that in this moment of pressure, that we're feeling that we've got clarity, that we've got clarity that this nation has to, we have to radically reimagine every single system in this nation. That if we're going to talk about the economy, it's not based on how well the stock market, but it's judged on how well the people in this country that are workers every day are doing. If we're talking about how well we're doing that this is the wealthiest country in the world, we should be embarrassed that we're not right. providing basic needs, housing, right. basic needs, health care, basic need food access to every single human being in this country and we can do that and not even miss a beat we ought to be embarrassed that we're talking about that this country is wealthy and and strong yet it could not and yet it could not even take care of our people for two months y'all right. right. tell you that you have so money. A, a year yes. of savings my point is we have to recognize, I think what time it is, it is time for us to be honest, to move right. away from this American exceptionalism that keeps us stuck in a mold that we're continuing where people are dying and literally lean into the opportunity for us to really change and shape the nation that we all deserve. A nation mm -hmm. that doesn't put children in cages because they got a different passport. A nation that doesn't force making sure that having women getting a hysterectomy that didn't even, what, didn't even consent to it. Do y'all know how crazy that is? That's right, that's ultimately, right. What I do know, right? What I do know is I do know the beauty of people. I know that these women that are on this, on, on, on here with me right now, these sisters would literally defend my life as I would defend yes. theirs. That's and right. fundamentally we as black futurists yes. and visionaries, we are shaping the world we want to see and being able to partner with organizations and businesses like Lush, I, you know, that really have a, um, have a belief in supporting grassroots work, I think that that's how we will make change. I think that's how change will happen in this country. That's right. Yes. Beautiful. Absolutely. Whew. Thank you. Thank you so much. Did anyone want to add? I feel, I feel like I know what time it is. Yeah. <laughs> I knew it. Yeah. Just add enough. Yeah, I mean, but I, so I'm going to take that thread. I'm going to take that thread. Mm -hmm. No, I agree. It, it, it's mm -hmm. not just time to believe those things. Um, because that's so important in our own tran political transformation. And, and I tell the story of my own, because I'm still being transformed in the service of the work according to Mary's mandate every day, truly learning lessons, getting, losing, uh, you know, falling on my face, et cetera. Um, but that personal transformation is really important. And I also do want us to see that there is a lot being presented to us of solutions we could we could 
we could be a part of, we could take in. So in, in example, I think that black movement and the black really political ecosystem across the country that has been born and expanded and grown over the last decade is really offering us an opportunity to create a new way that we engage in elections and not just in the transactional version of elections, but really be engaged with candidates who we love and who we care about and to have solutions that we love. And so I'm gonna give you a, a couple of pieces of homework. So one is uh, we just hosted the Black National Convention on August 28th for the, for the Movement for Black Lives that includes Included, um, included these two incredible women and nearly a hundred black activists across the country. It is three hours long and every single minute is worth your time. It talks about not just electoral justice and what is, is, is on the ballot November 3rd. It talks about the fact that where all of y'all live and are watching, there is a black person fighting right now everywhere you live in every corner of this country where there are black people there is a black person fighting for you for us for your family for a better way and so what what i find that so inspiring i find it so inspiring to know that right outside my window there is someone thinking about my community even if i'm not thinking about it in that moment so so i want you to engage in that it's not just about being on other people's terms our people have been building really incredible campaigns and winning in winning, and that's what the Black National Convention really intended to do. And then the second, the second part is that the Movement for Black Lives uh, drafted a piece of federal legislation called the Breathe Act. It's 117 pages, written for and by uh, organizers, led by a team of Black women inside the Movement for Black Lives. We wrote a piece of legislation, y'all. Okay, like we wrote it in the middle of Freedom Summer. We wrote a piece of legislation. And I say that one because I just am tired. And so I'm like, there are fruits of all of our labor. And because I believe it's politically viable. And so if you go to breatheact.org, you can actually engage with the bill. And I may say more um, as we continue the conversation, but the reason it feels so important to me is we took the vision for Black Lives Mm -hmm. And we turned it into a piece of federal legislation that most people would say is incredibly lofty. But what it does actually do is the work of divest, invest, which has been the conversation all summer, defunding from systems of harm and incarceration and policing and investing and funding the, the uh, systems and the reimagining that Latasha talks about. We actually could create city programs and state programs that do that reimagining work in partnership with community. So I you to engage in that with rigor and curiosity and seriousness. It's not symbolic, these ideas. They're real if we make them real. That's right. Whew. Facts. Thank you. Facts. Facts. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I just, I just want to add a, a layer on what time it is, your talk. Mm -hmm. And I think it's decision making time. Yeah. It's decision making time, you know, and I think that um, everybody, if you have been any, if you have watched, witnessed, saw anything, that there is no reason. I don't think that anybody could say, I don't know what time it is. I don't see, I don't, uh, that folks can't recognize um, the ways in which those who are responsible um, for the livelihood of this country has betrayed us in all the ways, both present and historically, because those things mm -hmm. must be done for. But it's decision-making time. And I think it's a, a moment to decide how will I be aligning my values? How am I aligning uh, what it is I believe to be true in terms of the concrete reality of what we're in? And then what am I going to do about that? Because I think that, you know, oftentimes we know that police are killing people in the street all the time. We know this. And folks will still decide, well, maybe if we'll just get him a camera, you know, like, no, we can dibble and dabble in which many folk have dibbled and dabbled for years, trying to reform a thing that we know is already broken and rotten, right? Mm -hmm. We can dibble and dabble and say, well, if we just give folk a few dollars here during the worst pandemic, you know, one of the worst pandemics we've, at least in my lifetime, that many of us have seen, that that'll just be okay. And I think that if we don't intentionally make the hard decision, 
make the make the hard left turn completely, like make a hard turn that we'll continue to see many of these things repeat, right? Um, yeah. The doctor was saying people are people have been dying. Yeah. The truth of the matter is people are going to keep dying. That's right. We don't collectively make a decision that we may not have all of our freedom dreams that we are trying to manifest in the now. They can be made such and they could be made manifest if more folk will make a decision to say it's freedom time. And by any means possible, we're going to do what must be done because in 10 years, five years, et cetera, we refuse for this to be the story that we continue to tell. And so it's decision making time. Wow. And, and and just on just a, a small part, just with Mary, you know, when I was talking about kind of the pressure I, I think we can pressure can either crush you yeah. or transform you that's right and so that's right. Part of what has to happen what we have to that's understand right. is in this moment and yeah. if you re resist it you know that's sometimes right. you want it you you just want to resist the pressure by being the same that's and until right. the pain of being the same becomes greater than the pain to change you won't ever change and that's so right. right now i think what time it is is we're all being called to transform that we can talk mm -hmm. about the folks outside of us we can talk about these systems while all those things need to change they will change when we change when we decide to stand in our fullness and our power and our beauty and really operate in our agency there's some things that are existing right now they won't be able to stand right they can't stand. and so in many ways we're waiting until those things change right but part of the change and the activation of that change is us we are the missing element and so that's why so much of our work mm -hmm. is rooted in the notion of reminding us not 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 telling folks but reminding us that we have power that our very humanity says that we have value and so operating from that perspective and so that we take this moment and this pressure we're feeling and we're being ye transformed in this moment so that we can transform everything around us and not only transform our communities but this nation and ultimately i think we will transform the world i know that's right Ooh. thank you um i, I need to jump in here because i know so many folks uh, also have questions. So I just want to remind the audience that they can pop questions into the chat and we'll do our best uh, to, to get through some of those in the latter part of this discussion. Um, I'm curious, I know that many of us understand and know the power of art and culture in this movement building. And I'm curious if you can say more about how <laughs> art is a technology, a tool, a way of life, however <laughs> we want to phrase it, but talking about the role of arts and culture in our movements. Come on, Mayor. You know what we got to do, Mayor. You know what we got to do. Come on, Mayor. <laughs> okay, let's see. Come on, let's Mayor. See here. Um, uh, I woke up this morning with my mind, and it was stayed on freedom. I woke up this morning with my mind, stayed on freedom. I woke up this morning with my mind, my mind, it was saying no freedom. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Ooh, yes. I was really, I, I was like, okay, so if Aisha gets in this, we're gonna have a whole freedom course. And I was, I would just dance. <laughs> well, the first thing I did right was the day I started to fight. Yeah. The prize on the prize and hold on. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. So it is yes. music. And I know even when we were talking to people in the movement, mm -hmm. and Mary does it, there's particularly those of us in the South, that fundamentally yes. what we know is that. That so what music does and what arts, you know, it gives a space for us to connect to our humanity. That oftentimes yeah. you say speeches and that people go to the head, but music goes to the heart. And so I feel like if we can just get people in the place of really being able to connect to their humanity, to create, to connect to their deepest creative space, right? Because that to me, that's where the creative lives, right? And to connect to that, if I can just remind you for five seconds mm -hmm. that you are a human being. 
That's right. Perhaps you can hear me differently. If I remind you to feel, to allow yourself to feel, just to be in that space with me, then there is space. It provides access. And so what I think why billions and billions of dollars and billions of people, there's never been any group of people ever on this earth that didn't have some form of music, right? Because I think it comes out of our humanity, right? Nobody has to teach us uh, to sing. My mother swears that I came out singing. I probably did, but, I, but, but, but music has this way, even for me, sometimes, even when this work gets really tough, Sometimes I'm singing to myself so so much so that I'm in a grocery store and I'm here. I know you know what I'm talking about. And you too, Aisha. I'm going to the grocery store and I'm in a line and someone said, oh, you got a nice voice. I said, what you mean? And I'm like, how you know I can sing? I was like, <laughs> yes. And I just, uh, I love you both and I miss you so much. I feel like I, I've already decided that, um, Aisha, that you're my friend, but I'm like, this is making me miss Latasha and Mary so much. But I, one thing I wanted to say too is I didn't come out singing. I would be on, I would be on Broadway right now if I did. But <laughs> I think that culture is, um, it's our connection points. It's a it's another language. Like I I, know, I mean I remember my friends in the games that we played when I was a kid. On you know I still remember those by heart. Like if my godchildren want to play a little something, I know exactly. It's in my it's in my bodily memory, and I feel like as I even consume culture, right? Like as I'm watching TV shows, as I'm engaging in a song, I know what's for me. Like I can feel it. I can tell that it was for me and it either affirms something or connects something or makes you feel mm -hmm. something. And I, I think that this specific movement has really not just ushered in this specific moment, not just ushered in a political renaissance, it's ushered in a cultural yeah. and artistic renaissance. And, and the reason that that can happen is because the culture doesn't just mirror what the politics are. The culture right. is the politics. And so we are like, I was talking about P Valley today, y'all. I love P Valley, okay? And I feel like, you know, Atlanta folks will know, okay, if you're a man oh, yeah. connoisseur, but P Valley is such a delicious show that it's so queer, it's so trans, it truly it, and it's pro sex worker, et cetera. It didn't need to do anything for me to just get in that and to really feel like that was not just for me, but that it was political, even if they weren't talking about politics. And I think that's what's so dope. And, and one of the reasons why that intersection is a really important part of the transformation. Ooh. Ooh. Yes, yes, Thank yes. you. Ooh, I, I have one more question um, for this part of the conversation, and then we'll take a short break and uh, pivot to some of the audience questions. I'm curious how history um, and, and, and the folks who have helped laid the path that we are traveling and or inventing, reimagining, um, how that informs some of the work that you're doing, what really inspires you from history and what narratives we need to carry forward. So either first part, second part of that question, all the, the you know, history. You know, I'll, I'll just share what came up for me, which is so interesting because I, this is not what I expected to answer, but I'll just say what's on my spirit to answer. You know, this whole construct of history, I'm not sure if that's African based, right? I think that's very Western and European because in terms of how time is seen, like there's once upon a time that was once upon a people, you know, I am really clear that even as I do the work now, I can feel my ancestors. I think that there is a particular, um, and most indigenous cultures, yeah. most Eastern cultures um, see and feel the same thing. I think in some ways, you know, and, and I do think because of capitalism that in many ways we found different ways that we got to commodify everything. We have to organize everything mm -hmm. and we see everything in kind of spaces. I'm not sure. I think that there's an intersection of time and space that even when we're talking about history, you know, when people say history repeats itself, you know, in many ways, I think it does in the sense of not, it's not just history. I think that there is ebbs and flows in human development. And I think that what we see is that each generation has enough is, is, is responding to whatever it is in that moment. And those generations after them can actually learn, build on, but, or they may make the same, same mistakes or may be able to build from that. And so um, when I think about history, I am a native of Selma, Alabama, right? 
And you cannot be from Selma, Alabama and not really recognize kind of the power of the Voting Rights Act and the voting rights movement. But I'm also shaped by the Black Power Movement. And I'm also shaped by from the civil rights movement to the suffrage movement to the abolitionist movement. And so it's, it's in, in, in interesting ways, I think a part of those, those movements are still here, right? <laughs> we time stamp pieces, but I think they're still here, right? But I also think that the lessons, you know, the lessons that I learned is that I do realize that I'm in a place of privilege, that there were ancestors before me that didn't have half the resources that I have, that didn't have any resources and circumstances, didn't have the protection the education, the opportunity I have. And so I feel, for me, I feel compelled that I have a responsibility, right? Because of the history, not just to learn from it, right? But I have, like, I see it almost like a, a relay race that each has four legs and each, you know, you got the anchor, you got, like, you got to literally be able to take it to the next, to the next generation. And so for me, I'm looking at, I'm in this between of looking at, how does the future, how my belief around the future and the future I want to see, how how am I responding to that? How am I learning from history? But how am I literally, it almost, it goes with me. I don't see it like in a book. It goes with me. Sometimes I am literally sitting down saying, I wonder what Fannie Lou Hamer would do right That's now. Right. Oh, That's what right. What Malcolm X say right now, <laughs> right? And pull, you know, try to pull from the wisdom of those before me. Um, and so it's really interesting. In some ways, I think that there are some spaces about history that are fluid, that really are about teaching us, but it lives in me. I tell folks the blood of the blood of my ancestors is flowing through me. And there's some DNA encoding. Sometimes there are things that I know, I don't know how I know, right? Other than I attribute it to, there is some historical connection in my line that I get a bit of information and then I'm able to shape and imagine and create in my own, in my own space, my own voice as well. Mm. 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 Yes, indeed. okay. Yes. We have to. I'm gonna let's let those nutrients, all of that, just soak in. Um, I'm I'm being told that we should take a mini break, <laughs> so um, we're going to play a song called "Just Breathe" that I have the honor of writing, um, and I want to honor it and and have it really center on the Breathe Act and Breathe Day, which is today. Happy um, so let's day. just honor that. <laughs> Man. We all need to breathe. And then we'll come back and answer the audience questions. <laughs> Don't try to be, just be. Inhale, exhale, breathe. Don't try to be, just be. Inhale, exhale. Breathe. I believe in miracles. I believe in a greater world. I believe in good things. And it starts with me. Thank you for never giving up, mama. When times get tough, you always cared for it. And it lies in me. Music keeps me from dying inside. Never feel like I have much to hide. I think my feelings still know how to breathe. Sometimes they treat me separate from society. Some days it's hard to get a hold. Inspiration's what it takes, and I gotta know. Building faith in community. Looking past in my heart to see. Breathe. I be. We be. Try to be, just be. Inhale, exhale, breathe. Don't try to be, just be. Inhale, exhale, breathe. I pay high, bow down low. I keep it humble cause I'm always on the real, yo. Pass down knowledge, ancestors to the sea. I play freedom, flowers rise up so beautifully. And they say we cannot succeed. I refuse your stupidity, slavery. I was born free and free. I will be. Your oppression is insanity. My impression is humanity.
And we're back. Ooh. <laughs> Thank y'all. Shout out to Dimitri uh, for making that music video. Uh, let's jump in with the first audience question, which comes by way of Ambie Star. Uh, Ambie says, I've donated to most of the groups mentioned. How can I be more active and bring people together? Oh, mm. that's that's a wonderful, uh, thank you, Ambie. I can share real quickly. Before we want, I can't just step over that song. I just want you to know, sister, that oh. you gave <laughs> that. So we're not gonna just step over the song. The song is <laughs> beautiful and I need this, so thank you. Um, um, <laughs> Ambi, um, I will tell you with Black Voters Matter, thank you so much for supporting our work. I don't know where you're, if you're in one of our 11 states, we have caravans going on today. We were caravanning in nine neighborhoods in, um, in Ohio, but we also caravan in Louisiana, Alabama, Georgia, um, in Tennessee today. So we're in 12 states where we're caravanning. If you want to connect with one of our caravans, please reach out to us. You can reach out to us on our website. We also do texting parties. So if you want to get on and text, we get together and we text out thousands of, of messages. We do postcard parties as well. There are many ways. The most important way though is, is to activate yourself and see yourself not just as a donor, but as an act, as an activator. And the way that you can do that, we say take the 10 pledge, right? That 10 people, there are folks in your family, in your environment, in your neighborhood that have not been touched, have not been reached, that if you can make sure that you reach out to them, you can be the better advocate there are folks in your family that might not listen to me, but they can listen to you. Yeah. And so if you can be responsible for making sure that you res deliver 10 votes, that's what we need. That's awesome. Yes. And I will say, as a, as a, another, as a next step from there, like out of those 10 people, you might want to then huddle with them and like, hey, let's actually like have a, you know, front porch conversation. Yeah. Talk about how, what does safety actually mean, you know? And how do we, you know, build uh, processes to take care of each other to address harm? Um, there's a pod structure that many people are learning about in terms of who do we call when we have harmed or harmed somebody else? How do who are the people in our neighborhoods and communities that are skilled that can respond to when um, uh, moments of crisis are happening? And so those are some ways too. And we in in you know in this conversation about how we know again that police are doing what they do in our communities there are ways in which we can begin to build infrastructure amongst the folks that we physically live in proximity to and inside of our family and other communities to also build out the world that we're trying to see it starts on that scale as well thank you mm -hmm. just i'm gonna let i'm gonna let no that's 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 good <laughs> find a political home Find a place, organization. place where you can contribute now. Find a place for you to contribute inside of your own transformation. I, yeah. I love that advice. So yeah. Um. Whew, thank you. Um, I think we have time for one more question from Nisa Kane. All of you are inspiring leaders in the community, and I'm curious to who uh, to know who inspires you and who do you enjoy learning from. It can be someone in current time or in history in the dialectic of history as Latasha so <laughs> poignantly uh, pointed out a little earlier. So <laughs> who inspires you? Yeah. Mm. I, I mean, it's so many. I mean, I'm going to say there's two um, in particular. One of them is um, uh, Yeshua, it's Jesus Christ, that the, the message of of Christ and not in the context of even in the religious context, because I think so bad I was like, I think so. People, so many people have distorted um, and created a a, a framework, um, a religious uh, a framework, which is about judgment and beating people up. But if you really study, or it really think about how I see and how I hold what I think is the ministry of Christ is to be really about the embodiment of love. Can you get any deeper than that? To really be about that, you looking out for you giving sight to the blind, that you're gonna set the captives free that you believe that the, the that the poor that the least of these you know are the greatest like can you get any better than that there's something um there's something about that that is so inspiring to me and then i would also say my grandmother and it's so interesting because my grandmother i'm um, growing up in the south my grandmother would would pray so much that when my me and my brother would do things we would get in trouble we would say you think jesus gonna tell her <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think there is. I think we all have to have. For me, I think there's a space um, of there's something about um, those that seek to be the pure 
embodiment of love. Yes. Just on the GP, all the other stuff, you can take all the other stuff away, right? But that's the pure embodiment of love and to have a ministry and to have a life that is about how do you lift up the least of these? That's right. I want to be like that. Mm. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Well, so I, you know, I, I, I feel like I, you know, I stay inspired. I stay inspired, right? Like I, I definitely feel like that my commitment to Black movement means that there is never any lack of people being really brave and courageous. Um, and so there are a couple of things that keep me grounded, though, in some of that inspiration. One is um, I journal every single day, multiple times a day, and it's not. Um, I don't have prompts or anything. I just write whatever flow is flowing from me. Yeah. And um, and I learned to do that because of Bell Hooks, who, as I was really understanding my own Black feminism, was like, you have to define for yourself at all times, every time, tell people how to be with you, tell people how to love you, tell people what your politics are. And so I'm always trying to decide for myself what I feel about things, not just what other people tell me. And then um, I, I really, I, I, I don't want to you know embarrass anybody, but I'm like, I, Mary Hooks, Latasha Brown, Carissa Lewis, um, Patrice Colors, these are my leaders. Mm. These are my real leaders. You know, and I want to say, um, I don't know why I'm getting teary-eyed. I think I'm I think I'm tired, but I'm also just, it's true. I feel accountable to them. If they if they're if I am out of alignment with people who I love and respect, who are fighting for their families the way that I'm fighting for mine, that's not right with me. And so I find a lot of inspiration. And I want to say one thing about Mary Hooks, because she never <laughs> it. it's so important. You know, I really consider Mary Hooks one of our modern day Harriet Tubman's. And the reason I say that, she is the architect of the Black Mamas Bailout. And what makes the, that so special isn't just that she coordinated hundreds of Black Mamas to get out of jail every year on Mother's Day. But it was the way she came to it. And the way she told me, we were like in the back of a van and she was real chill. She's always real chill like that. And she goes, this abolition thing ain't, ain't happening fast enough for me, sis. You know what I was thinking about the other day? We about to just get a lot of mamas out of jail. We just gonna get a lot of mamas out of jail. And I said, I ain't even really, I didn't fully even, I wasn't with her yet. I said, mama's out of jail. Let's do it. I'm in. So I went to my, you know, my mama's bailout, waited for these beautiful black women to come be reunited with their children because Mary Hook said, it's time to let black mamas out of jail. That to me is so important and inspiring that we honor those moments, right? We honor that the people next to us are truly architecting. Like when I think about Latasha, when I met her, was was working to fund organizations in the South and said, Black voters matter, y'all. Let's go. Let's go. And we just started riding with each other. And I mean, that to me inspires me that, that people really are that clear, that brave, that committed, that rigorous. And so I, I really feel so much inspiration from the people around me. And they are not perfect and neither am I. But I actually am appreciating that what I get to do every day is to, to contribute to this moment to do my very best and to be accountable to other black people who believe that the best that the best of me is possible yes. and that I get to try to do that every day and that the best of this country and the best of black people is possible. So um, for, for whomever asked that question, it's really also to look around. There's so much history, but, but my goodness, are people being so freaking inspiring right now. Mm. Mm. Mom. We're just about out of time. I'm but so I, I'm sorry, Mary. Curious. I took your time. No, no, Mary. Sorry, Mary. Mary. Mm. Wanna maybe you can jump in with round us off, um, please. You know, said about Mary. She was like Mary was real chill. I was like, yeah, Mary, real chill too. She. Oh yeah. <laughs> Until you get in the way of her freedom, that's the thing. Yeah, and it is. Until you get in the way of her freedom, and then it's clap, clap, clap. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all have something else. Y'all have something else. Yeah. Mary, um, Mary, did you want to round us off with a, a thought or, or a. You know, uh, I literally, when I was like, it's so many. And then I said, on my little paper, I wrote, comrades, comrades. Yes. Like there was a certain energy, I believe, that, that you know, 
because again, every day it's a choice to choose to do this work, to wake up, you're going to do it. You're going to do what you say you're going to do. You're going to do your list. You're going to call the people. You're going to walk them. And to know and to feel the energy of everybody else who wake up and say, yep, we're going for broke today. Yep, we're going to go get free today. We're going to burn the plantation today. We <laughs> Like that right there, you know, and then the text threads and the folks who are like, all right, y'all, this is what we're doing, et cetera, et cetera. Like that right there is energizing. That right there keeps me going. And when I and I am very much um, feel held by um, my, my blood ancestors, but also by Queen Nanny of the Maroons, Mother Ella Baker, Miss Baker, who many of us have learned our organizing practice from. Um, Mama Ruby Sales, she, yeah. one of the elders, she will call me, honey. Uh, Kyla Mumbabaro, who has poured so much. Wendy Mandela, shout out with just her birthday. Kwame Ture, and so many, so many, so many. And, and the unknown ones. Because many of us mm-hmm. ain't going to ain't gonna remember who we, we are. You know what I'm saying? It don't matter. They ain't why we do it, no way. But it's the folk yeah. who oftentimes you don't even know who are the ones that continue to carry the work, you know, for decades and decades and years and years and stay grinding. And I want to be like them, just to stay grinding because this is what the mandate calls us to do, you know? Yeah. Ooh. Thank you all so much. This has been such a powerful conversation. And I know that it's sparking so much more, not only joy, but change, um, restorative practices, action, all the things. So I wanna thank you all again so much for your time. Um, Please be sure to follow and support all of these incredible folks and the organizations that they represent, the collective action, the collective uh, leadership that they represent. That will be coming up on the screen shortly. Please also be sure to take action to support the BREATHE Act and make sure if you're eligible to vote, that you do vote, uh, that you register to vote, that you make your plan to vote. And if you've already done that and you've double, triple checked your registration that everything is in order, then please tap the shoulder of a friend or socially distance wave and make sure you've got your voting pod together that you, you don't travel alone in this journey um, of making change, but that we do this collectively because we need each other. Um, We're going to jump into a a song called Pandemic. And one of the traditions that I bring on the road is to dance and to groove with it. So if you all are feeling it, our incredible (laughs) speakers, panels, esteemed, uh, wonderful, amazing people, then feel free to groove with it. And sometimes I even invite us to do a power pose, to take up space, to really feel our power in an embodied way. So I might invite us to do that a couple of times. I'll do it with y'all or I will do it collectively. Um, And this song is called Pandemic. Oh, and for those of you tuning in via YouTube, Facebook, all the platforms, this is being recorded. It will be posted afterwards. Please be sure to share this conversations with friends and loved ones to amplify and to resonate and to do all the things to continue to keep this conversation going. As we know, we're in it for the long haul. This is a marathon. So we need you and your support and continue to amplify and work with us on this. Um, Without much further ado, pandemic. (laughs) You said 45 knew about this. As we segue into that, I just want to thank each and every one of you again. Thank you. Thank you. Feel free to group with us. And and I'm in Philly. We're still we're still alive. We're still alive. We're still. (laughs) You're global. You're a global citizen. (laughs) I'm global. (laughs) I thought we were. <laughs> and you can feel free if there are things that you wanted to share that we didn't get a chance um, shout outs or just things to remember I know y'all are doing so many incredible things collectively so I've seen uh, that there are a lot of reminders to have and for those of us still streaming feel free to group with it yeah. I wish we may wish we might yeah. And if you're feeling it, I invite you to do a power pose in 10. Yeah. Nine. Go into eight. Yes. Seven. Roku, which is six in Japanese. Go. <laughs> Three. I need a little volume. Right. And one. Power pose. Feel free to groove in it. 
We know that this change is also embodied. We can hold that power pose. Feel our power embracing it. Too many expectations sometimes want to put us in a box, but we don't fit in boxes. <laughs> Except for maybe this live screen rectangle. <laughs> and then check it out. Yeah. No box. Go when will you? I need to mix it. I'll send y'all all the music. Yes. <laughs> you got to. Yes. I need this. Over supplies, all workers save lives. They need protection too. What we gonna do? What can we do? We do. I need a big boy. I know. I gotta learn instrument. <laughs> You are the horn. Yeah. Anytime. Maybe I'm going to miss this. Maybe I'm going to miss this. How do you pray instruments? How do you pray instruments? I do. I'll do you. I'll do you. You and Lizzo. You and Lizzo need it. That's what I'm going to say. Yeah, that's it. I'm a little rusty, so I don't know if I still qualify. You're amazing. All of us are amazing. What was that? Do you play an instrument? No. The spoon? Yay. The spoon. Yes. Yes. Oh, please send us to us. Aisha. Yes. yes. Absolutely. It's been such a pleasure. Thank you all so much for sharing the time and connecting um, and for reminding us of all the things that are so important and the action that needs to buttress exactly what we're talking about tonight. So super thankful. Arigato gozaimasu, Judy Jeff, merci beaucoup, all the things. And we hope to see you all again sooner than later in a space like this or perhaps out in the world <laughs> once all the things have changed to the new normal. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much for this space. We got Thank this, y'all. We got <laughs> this. Love is the greatest power. Love. Yes. Thank y'all so Ooh. much. Thank y'all so much. Thank you. Thank you. Now, let's watch this wild debate, y'all. <laughs>